Since when was losing money ever a viable financial strategy? Negative gearing is loosely thrown around in property investing. And if you don't fully understand it, here's why the extremely wealthy do use it and why the everyday investor should try and avoid it. Gearing itself is just the process of leveraging someone else's money to buy an asset. In property investing, this can be achieved by using the bank's money in the form of a home loan to purchase a property. The initial negative, positive, or neutral lingo around gearing just refers to the cash flow, which is either money coming in or money coming out from that asset or property. Negative cash flow or negative gearing just means that your total expenses outweigh your income. These are things like interest repayments, council rates, strata fees, repair costs. They all cost more than your net rental income. Let's say you had a home loan that cost $1,300 a month in interest repayments. $100 for council fees, $80 for strata fees, and you're allowed $150 a month for general repairs. Your monthly expenses would be $1,680. Now let's say your rental income was $360 a week, or $1,560 a month. With rental agent fees deducted at 6.6%, your net rental income would be $1,457. Overall, this is a loss of $223 per month not including your initial agent setup fees, weeks or months of empty vacancy, or any major repair costs. So why would anyone intentionally set themselves up to lose $2,676 a year? The simple answer is capital growth, or at a very high level, the amount of money you make from buying and selling a property. Historically, housing prices in Australia have increased by 6.8% annually. So if we take the previous example, let's say the property was worth $480,000. Theoretically, the capital growth on that property should be about $33,000 for the first year. When you compare $33,000 in growth to only $2,676 in losses, it seems well worth the payoff, right? Wrong, because you're still gonna get that $33,000 worth of growth, regardless if you negatively or positively cash flow your investment property. So why is negative gearing still a consideration? Current Australia policies favour negative gearing, as it allows investors to claim that $2,676 against their individual income as a tax deduction. Now, if you've never really delved into your tax return or how tax deductions work, you don't get that whole $2,676 back at the end of financial year. You do, however, get some money back from your tax return, with varying amounts depending on what your taxable income bracket is. Let's say you earn $80,000 a year. This would put you in the tax bracket of $37,000 to $90,000 a year, and you'd be paying 32.5 cents for every dollar after $37,000. On a salary of $80,000 a year, you would be paying $17,547 in tax for the 2019 to 2020 financial year. With the included tax deduction of $2,676 from the previous example, your tax payable would be $16,677 meaning you're only recovering 870 of your 2,676 yearly outgoings. Now, these numbers may still seem minor to you, and you might be saying, Jordan, I'm happy to fork out $1,806 to get that $33,000 worth of capital growth. And yes, I agree with you, but now I wanna to talk to you about something called investment lockout. Majority of Australian property investors get themselves locked in at only one or two investment properties and find it extremely hard to get to the third. For simplicity, let's now duplicate out our existing scenario for the amount of investment properties we dream to have. As we know, for one property, it costs us 223 a month. For two, it's gonna be 446. For three, it's gonna be 669. For five, it's gonna be 1,115. And for 10 investment properties, it's gonna be a whopping $2,230 per month in outgoings. Now, my short-term property investment goal is to get 10 properties. And I don't know about you, but on top of my living expenses, which is mostly just my wife's shopping costs, I can't afford $2,230 a month just for investment purposes. Some months, depending on how much my wife spends, even $669 for just three investment properties is too much. Not to mention, this whole scenario has just been an example. Based on actual figures, the banks would assess these same three investment properties at an outgoing of $15,000 per month. With banks taking these factors and risks into consideration for only three investment properties, it's no wonder that Australians get caught up on only one or two properties. So back to my initial statement. Since when was losing money ever a viable financial strategy? And really, it only applies for people who already have a big income. 
Negative gearing does help some people in certain situations. If you're an individual earning more than $180,000 a year, you're getting taxed at a whopping 45 cents per dollar. Compared to our example before, on an $80,000 a year salary, you're only getting taxed at 32 and a half cents. If people earning more than $180,000 a year can claim enough tax deductions to get them into the lower tax bracket, they can potentially give themselves a bigger tax refund at the end of financial year, all the while still accumulating that good capital growth. But if you're new to property investing and you want to grow your portfolio by more than just one or two investment properties, I would avoid negative gearing altogether. Finally, if you've already got a negatively geared property and you want to turn it into a positively geared property, one of my up and coming videos is going to explain some methods about how to turn it around. So if you want to see that content, hit the like button, subscribe. As always, seek your own financial advice for your current situation. And until next time, happy house hunting.